This presentation is brought to you by the Lean HR and People Development Summit, a product of Lean Frontiers. Learn more about the summit by visiting leanfrontiers.com slash LHR. Well, McKee Foods is a family bakery. Uh, we're best known for our Little Debbie brand snack cakes. You can see some of our other brands. We are uh, headquartered in Collegedale, Tennessee, which is outside of Chattanooga. We have operations in Virginia and in Arkansas. And that's where I have the privilege of working with a team of, an, of amazing HR people. And we tackled for one of our first problems to solve, a uh, little problem called turnover. So I'm gonna talk through a little bit about that. But before that, a little bit more about the company. We bake and the world smiles. And uh, we do this with great people, constantly searching to find a better way and through uh, stewardship. We do it because we wanna bring smiles, not only to um, our employees, but our customers, suppliers, communities and our owners, which is the McKee family. So a part of our process each year is operational planning. And during that time, we do voice of the customer sessions and our production team, uh, in fact, the phrase they use is new hire turnover is killing us. They didn't have any data, they just said it's killing us, can you help? So we dove into the problem and we spent some time, uh, we had learned that we really needed to focus on defining the problem. So we used a decision tree to narrow it down. And so we were able to narrow it to third shift. It was occurring during the first four months. And uh, the majority of it was happening on one particular production line and the supervisor was Jenny. And we estimated that this was costing our operations about $300,000 every year uh, in cost and also inhibiting their ability to fill orders. So we assembled a team and in the past, uh, the HR folks, probably the HR leaders, uh, would have huddled in a room and solved the problem. And obviously that wasn't working because we still had a turnover problem. So this time we included people from production, actually the supervisor that had the worst retention. We involved her in the team. So I'm gonna describe for you the mindset of that team uh, in the beginning. There was one team member that said, we'll never find the root cause because everybody quits for a different reason. There's no one common reason. Um, another team member said, I know the cause, it's the supervisors. We just need to fix the supervisors, that's the problem. And uh, for me, uh, being on that team, I was a little afraid. We had never invited the customer to our table. We always wanna be at theirs, but we had never invited them to our table. And I knew we had some problems within our team and they were gonna see those. And what if we were the problem? So we had some anxiety over that. But we committed to trying it anyway, so we gave it the best we knew. So we took time, we took a lot of time. It actually frustrated a few, few folks that we took so much time studying the problem. Uh, we looked at exit interviews, applications. Uh, we also called, spent time calling terminated employees. But we never could really get anything. We never could get at that root cause. So it wasn't until we started talking to the new employees that were still there that we started to learn what was happening. And we did this through focus groups. We did it at two weeks of employment. So they had just finished a week of orientation and their first week on the real job. And then we repeated it at four months so they had completed their on the job training. And uh, we used, uh, we thought we could just do a questionnaire, pass it out, they would rate, and then we would have data. But everybody rated it a four or five, it was great. <laughs> so it wasn't until we just started talking about it and we served pizza and sodas and we just started talking about their experiences. We kind of used the questionnaire as a platform or a springboard for those discussions. And we went to them, so the team went at midnight, met them during their break, and we huddled together and had these discussions. And what really started to come out was information about their experiences as a new employee. So we took all this feedback, and we just grouped it on a board and started putting like things together, and then we just started counting the number of mentions of the same problem. So um, I like to refer to this because it came out of stories that people told us about their experiences. I like to refer to it as data with soul because it came from the people. And we identified three main issues. Primarily, uh, the biggest two were our hiring process, 
uh, training was the other top one, and then our onboarding experience, specifically the handoff from orientation to the front line. So the first thing that we worked on was getting our own house in order. Uh, believe it or not, we had no standards for hiring new employees. So uh, because it's not a good thing that we didn't have standards, obviously, but it enabled us to incorporate changes right then as we built new standards and made adjustments to our processes. So we were able to incorporate some of their suggestions. So I want you to listen to Bobby, and he's going to recall what he remembers as his first day on the job right after orientation. This place is like a maze, and I still haven't got completely acclimated to, to north, south, east, and west in here. It's, it's everywhere. Um, because I'd been taken down there the week of orientation, uh, it was easy, it, you know, I knew how to get there, but there's a couple of times I had to go back and, and restart again. And then uh, I had to find, I didn't know who to find. I didn't, I had no idea who to find. I, I just, the third shift hadn't been there that week that was ori on, on orientation. So whenever I got down there, I didn't know who, uh, who was who. We thought we had a great process, but when you hear directly from employees what they experience, it really opens your eyes. So um, the production supervisor that was on our team, Jenny, and Gina was the other production person, uh, they worked with their team in production and they came up with the idea to have a meet and greet that first night that new employees report to their new job. And they come to a conference room that they already know, that they've already had training in, and they meet their trainer, they meet their supervisor, they meet the leadership, it's relaxed, it's calm, and then they're shown where to go, not expected to find it. Um, so now we're going to hear from Mai, and she's going to talk about her on-the-job training experience. During my three weeks of being trained down on the line, I had three different trainers. Um, all three different trainers had trained me differently. So one trainer told me that this is the process that we're doing, this is how we do it. And then I go to the next week, I go to a different trainer, and that trainer says, no, that's not the right way to do it, do it this way, and on forward. So it was quite hard. So as, as you can see, um, these were problems, you know, the handoff to the, the, the first line, front line supervisor, the on the job training. HR had no control over their processes, but because we had those people on our team, they heard this same message. They took this feedback and they resurrected some old training schedules, they put some standards in place, and they committed to having one trainer per new employee whenever possible. So they're, they're really making a difference there. So um, let's see. So after we put these three improvements in, we went back and repeated our focus groups, again at the same intervals with new employees. And uh, to, to our surprise and, and pleasure, none of these issues were coming up. So we knew that the solutions we put in place were working. And as far as retention results, we've improved from about 70% to 82%. Our target's 85% retention because that's our overall retention as a company, so we wanted to at least, our first target, to match overall retention in the company. So, so we felt good about that. We are um, continually working, though, to um, study the problem when we have defects or failures. Uh, we're going back and looking at those, those interviews, all the standards we put in place, and we're able to make adjustments. So the mindset after the team experienced this, and again, it was about over a, a year's period, uh, we now use data when we approach problems. In the past, we used assumptions and feelings on whatever the HR leadership thought was the problem. Uh, we also are okay being transparent about our processes. We were part of the problem, just like production was part of the problem. And then, like I said, we're practicing the PTRS by looking at the defects when we have them. And we've also um, come to realize that standardization is a launching pad for improvement. So, so that's a little bit of our story. This, these are the team members uh, in HR that worked on the project, and any of them would be happy to share information or tools that we used. And anyway, that's it. This presentation is brought to you by the Lean HR and People Development Summit, a product of Lean Frontiers. 
Learn more about the summit by visiting leanfrontiers.com slash LHR.